Ashley from the bookish realm. It's payback time. Let me explain. Ashley from the bookish realm, many other creators, booktubers, and authors did me a favor and took time out of their day to film cameos, really great cameos, for my top 210 science fiction books episode that's coming up later this month. And I noticed on Twitter that Ashley was asking for recommendations for translated fiction. She's trying to read books from all around the world. And I thought I'd do my part, film this video, because I've been so in the weeds lately working on the top 210 episode. It's taking all of my time, and I haven't come up with other content to film tonight. So I'm taking advantage of this. I'm Michael Levers, and this is Fit to be Read. <laughs> As I mentioned, Ashley is challenging herself to read a book from every country around the world. So I'm gonna do my part to try to help out. Please also put in the comments section books that you've read from other places that have been translated to English that you think that she would enjoy, that I would enjoy, and that all of us would enjoy. And while these are recommendations for Ashley, obviously, these are recommendations for all of you as well. My first recommendation is Vagabonds by Hao Jing Fang. Jing Fang is the first Chinese woman to win a Hugo Award. It wasn't for this novel. This novel was originally published in Chinese and then it was translated and published in English in 2020. This is a high philosophical, low action sci-fi novel. It comes in at about 600 pages, maybe 150 pages more than it needed to be, but still a great read. I'd recommend this for Ashley, of course, and for those who don't mind science fiction that is introspective and meanders along, it features a great examination with Earth representing extreme capitalist society and Mars representing or standing in for a near-utopia communist China. Witnessing how each plays out to its imagined extremes makes this a compelling read. We'll get back to China, but for now, let's head over to Norway. We've got Naive Super by Erlen Lowe, published in Norway in 1996. This is a Norwegian novel, translated and published in English in 2005. It's about 200 pages long. It was a bestseller in Norway. I also read somewhere that I think President Obama really liked this book. It's a very quirky read. Oddly enough, I read this book the same time I was reading Blake Crouch's Dark Matter many years ago while on vacation. Dark Matter was a much more traditional reading experience. This was a book that I'd pick up. I read five pages here, 10 pages here, three pages there. It was enough. It felt much more like I was reading bits of somebody's journal and you could really space out the reading as much as you wanted to. Spoiler alert, not really, because I already told you, Ashley will be appearing on my top 210 sci-fi books episode this month. And she's gonna speak about a couple of books, including Dark Matter. And I find that to be an interesting connection. The main gist in Naive Super is that we are tracking the life and day-to-day -day of a 20-something-year-old guy who sort of has a meltdown and drops out of college. We really get into his sense of anxiety, despair, and directionlessness. Especially clear are his difficulties letting go of expectations that he formed during childhood. And one particular thing that sticks in my memory is this childhood toy that he carries with him. And he, he treats it almost like a fidget tool that perhaps gives him a brief escape from his anxiety. If I recall correctly, this was a toy that had sort of like holes and then you had pegs that you would hammer with a mallet. So like a really young child's toy. And it was just interesting to see that this was this guy's escape from anxiety. I did recommend this book to somebody else in the past and she did not care for it. I liked it. I'm not saying it's gonna be a great read. Look, you're gonna have trouble finding something from Norway, I think. Give this one a shot because it's definitely a unique read and it's worth the read, I think, for the experience of reading something that's as unique as this is. And of course, I'll mention that not everything on this list is going to be science fiction, but this next one will be, and this is The Membranes by Chi Ta Wei, published in 1995 in Chinese, 2021 in English. This is novella length. Chi Ta Wei is a Taiwanese author. This is a really interesting setting. It's a dystopian world. The earth has become too hot because of global warming. So what do we do? We move to the bottom of the ocean. So everybody lives in domes. The main character, her name is Momo, and she is a dermal care skin technician. There are themes of the government spying on people. There is a lot of artificial intelligence at play here. It's interesting to see how nations are set up and how that's represented under the water and how battles occur on Earth. We don't get to see these battles. We just know that that's the nature of this world. And it's really interesting. And I think the, that the author is Taiwanese writing in Chinese sort of gives an added level of interest to this one. So I strongly recommend adding this one to your list. Let's stick around China a little bit longer. Ashley, everybody 
And let's look at The Three Body Problem by Shixin Liu, published in China in Chinese in 2008. This was translated by Ken Liu and published in English in 2015. This won the Hugo Award for Best Novel. I'm really recommending this for its superior sequels, Dark Forest, which is a complete unique reading experience from the original. And the third book, Death's End, which is one of the most mind-blowing, trippy reading experiences I've ever had. In Three Body, I really like the initial setting of the Cultural Revolution in China at the start of the book. Xixin Lu has an interesting approach to first contact and his potential pitfalls. He also introduces an interesting concept for how another planet might try to contact us virtually. Stepping away from science fiction again, but staying in the Chinese setting, we've got Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai Siji, published in French originally in 2000 and then translated to English in 2001. Reading The Three Body Problem inspired me to read other fiction related to the Cultural Revolution in China. This one really fits the bill and I recommend it. Two boys are sent off to live in the mountainside during the Cultural Revolution. I think one child's parent is a scientist and the other one is maybe a professor, but they're sent to live in poverty and it's a real adjustment for them. They're not allowed to have books, so books are banned as well. And there is another boy that they meet and they sort of be create a friendship with him, but he has this trunk which they assume has books in it. So we're sort of curious to see what happens with that. There's also a female character who is the titular daughter of the seamstress and she plays a really interesting part in the story and there's a really interesting kind of surprising reveal at the end. I strongly recommend this one. Coming back to Europe and coming back to science fiction, a Matka by Karen Tidbeck. This was originally published in Swedish in 2012 and then translated to English in 2017. This is approximately 200 pages, so not a really long read. There is a strong magical realism feel to this that you might like, and the world building is not neglected. Most interesting is the examination and the power of language. People on this colony must continue to speak of things around them or those things will melt away. It's a bit bizarre in a good way, and the author Tidbeck doesn't rescue you. She wants you to fully experience the journey through this totalitarian dystopia. An interesting among many question that arises is what form of rule might work in this place if not totalitarian, given that you and everything around you is at constant risk of dissolving? There are some 1984 and Handmaid's Tale parallels that you might also find to be a draw to this novel. The Siberiad by Stanislaw Lem, published in Polish in 1965 and then translated and published in English in 1974. This is an amazing collection of short stories, mostly centered around the shenanigans of two competitive robots. The the stories are deeply philosophical and at the same time they're really funny. Even upon my third read I still laugh at certain points in certain stories. This is one of the great collections of classic science fiction short stories. If you ever read Solaris or other works by Lem, don't go into these stories expecting more of the same. This is a very unique reading experience. Also by Stanislaw Lem is Solaris published in 1961 in the original Polish and then translated and published in English in 1970. A book that evokes my emotions so visceral is going to be another obvious recommendation. Lem reaches inside of you and makes you think deeply about our own reality or our human condition and our authenticity, how we see ourselves fitting into the world or the universe. In the novel, Lem does this using the story of a research team on the planet Solaris, studying and testing a large ocean that covers most of the planet. The consciousnesses of the research team are challenged with manifestations from deep within their minds, especially manipulating emotions of love and fear. If you're in the mood for something deeply philosophical, this is a great piece of classic science fiction not to be missed. While no film could truly represent this novel, there are a few adaptations of it, and I'd especially suggest a great 1972 movie by Soviet director Andrei Tarkovsky as a supplement to the reading experience. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts. Ashley, I hope you pick one of these books, and this is fit to be read.